Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video we're going to be looking at calculating the area between two intersecting circles using double integration. If you like the video then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado let's go over to the whiteboard. In this exercise we have a red and a blue circle which intersect. The region of intersection is shown in green. We are tasked with finding the area of the green region of intersection using double integrals and polar coordinates. The equation of each circle is shown in Cartesian coordinates. The red circle cuts the x-axis at 0 and 8 and has a radius of 4. The blue circle cuts the x-axis at minus 2 and 2 and has a radius of 2. Each circle is symmetrical about the x-axis. To complete this exercise we need to convert the equations of each circle from Cartesian to polar coordinates. To do this we'll substitute r cos theta for x and r sine theta for y. To understand why we do this, take a look at one of my earlier videos which goes into the detail. I'll post a link to it in the description of this video. For the red circle, substituting for x and y we get r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta minus 8r cos theta equals 0. Using the trig identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, and dividing both sides by r gives r equals 8 cos theta. For the blue circle, substituting for x and y gives r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals 4. Taking out the common factor of r squared and using the trig identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with r squared is equal to 4. And taking the positive square root of both sides, we get r is equal to 2. Now that we've found the radial distance r of both circles, let's look at the behavior of r when we use it to compute the area of the region shown in green. As r rotates in an anticlockwise direction from theta equals minus pi by 2 to positive pi by 2, so that's the angle theta makes with the x-axis, the radial distance from the origin is first determined by the red circle. When the red circle intersects with the blue circle at some angle of theta, the radial distance from the origin is determined by the blue circle until it once again intersects with the red circle. As it passes this intersection, the red circle takes over again until it reaches the angle of theta equals pi by 2 and the area is computed. As you can see, we have three sectors to consider between negative pi by 2 and positive pi by 2. However, because of symmetry about the x-axis, we only need to consider the area from theta equals 0 to theta equals positive pi by 2. We can double this result to get the complete area. Now we have two areas to compute. The first from theta equals 0 to an unknown angle of theta where the two circles intersect, and then from the same unknown angle of theta to pi by 2. We have two equations for the circles in polar coordinates shown here. We can use these to find the unknown angle of theta. From the first equation we see that at the point of intersection of the circles r the radial distance is 2. If we now substitute this value of r into the second equation we get cos of theta equals a quarter and therefore theta is equal to arc cos of a quarter. Now we understand the region when we rotate about theta, we can define the limits of integration of the outer integral. The first from theta equals 0 to theta equals r cos of a quarter. The second from theta equals r cos of a quarter to theta equals positive pi by 2. We need to multiply the results by 2 in order to take advantage of the symmetry. Now let's take a look in more detail at what happens when we sum infinitesimally small sectors of area in the r direction which will represent the inner integrals. This diagram represents a sector of the region capital R. The angle the sector makes is infinitesimally small and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each piece of area is the height multiplied by the width. So in this case dr is the height and r d theta the width. So dA equals r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction.
When we sum or integrate in the r direction for this exercise, we begin at the origin, where r equals zero, and our first integral will be governed by the blue circle which extends to r equals two. When we move past the point where the circles intersect, the red circle comes into play. Each sector will then extend from r equals zero to r equals eight cos theta. We can now define the inner integrals. The first is a lower limit of r equal to zero, and an upper limit of r equals 2, and we are integrating r dr d theta. And the second has a lower limit of r equals 0, and an upper limit of r equals 8 cos theta, and again we are integrating r dr d theta. Let's now evaluate the inner integrals. So the first is the integral from r equals 0 to r equals 2 of r dr. So the antiderivative r is r squared over 2, and we need to evaluate it between 0 and 2. So we get 2 squared divided by 2 minus 0, and this equals 2. And for the second of our inner integrals, we're integrating from r equals 0 to r equals 8 cos theta, r dr. So the antiderivative of r is r squared over 2, and we need to evaluate between the limits of 0 and 8 cos theta. So if we plug 8 cos theta into r squared over 2, we get 64 divided by 2 cos squared theta, and that'll be minus 0. Simplifying this, it gives us 32 cos squared theta. And now for the first of the outer integrals, we want to integrate from theta equals 0 to theta equals r cos of a quarter of 2d theta. So the antiderivative of 2 is 2 theta, and we need to evaluate it between 0 and r cos of a quarter. So if we plug r cos of a quarter into 2 theta, we get 2 r cos of a quarter. And if we plug 0 into 2 theta, we get 0. So we end up with 2 times r cos of a quarter. And for the second of the outer integrals, we want to integrate from theta equals r cos a quarter to theta equals pi by 2. 32 cos squared theta d theta. Now to do this, we're going to use the trig identity cos squared theta is equal to a half into 1 plus cos 2 theta. If we make this substitution and multiply by 32, we're then integrating from theta equals r cos of a quarter to theta equals pi by 2, 16 into 1 plus cos 2 theta, d theta. The antiderivative is 16 theta plus 8 sine 2 theta, and we need to evaluate this from r cos of a quarter to pi by 2. If we plug pi by 2 in first, 16 times pi by 2 gives 8 pi, and 8 sine 2 theta evaluates to 0 when we plug in pi by 2. Subtracting from this, what we get when we plug in r cos of a quarter we get minus 16 r cos of a quarter, and 8 sine 2 theta evaluates to 3.873 when we plug in r cos of a quarter. So we subtract 3.873. If we add to this the result obtained from our first integral, so plus 2 r cos of a quarter, and we multiply the whole thing by 2, because remember, we're only getting half a result. We had to multiply by 2 here and here. We get our final result of 16 pi minus 28 times r cos of a quarter minus 7.746.